is the worst two or three days I've ever had to experience. And I've seen through crisis in many, many countries. For nearly a fortnight, this island has been turned into a giant economic laboratory. A grand experiment has been carried out on the Cypriot people, involving trying to take part of their savings, closing their banks, and then essentially destroying their main industry. Tonight, draconian rules on withdrawing, exchanging and exporting currency too. But the inside story of what led to this is more remarkable even than that. The fate of this nation, determined at late night and often botched negotiations in Brussels, where Cyprus was considered too small to have to have a bailout. Chris Pavlou, a Cypriot and former leading British banker, was at the heart of discussions in Nicosia with the president and his regulators. Until last week, he was vice chairman of Lyki, also known as Popular Bank, Cyprus's second biggest. He spoke to Channel 4 News exclusively. It does seem as if, if you like, Berlin and Brussels and Frankfurt were very keen to communicate to Cyprus's leaders, you're not systemic. In some ways, you don't matter. You have no negotiating power. Unfortunately, that's what they said, yes. Unfortunately, yes. And it's not very nice, actually, to see two or three people, half your age, clever people, coming over there and shaking their hands to the president and saying, you have to do this, otherwise we'll bring you down. 30-year-olds? 30 30 30 well, no, no, 35, 35-year-olds. It is very painful for somebody who's just been elected to actually face that. Humiliating? A best. This is a shocked Cypriot finance minister, Michael Saris, in Brussels 11 days ago as his 16 Eurozone colleagues agreed a first botched bailout after a 10 hour meeting. There were cuts to all Cypriots and foreigners' savings. Hitting small savers was a Cypriot initiative, though signed off by all, but it would have kept the main two banks, including Lyki, alive. A week ago, however, it was spectacularly rejected by MPs. Amid euphoric protests, the opposition leader triumphant about facing down the Troika when I spoke to him. What they did was uh, unjust, unfair and a very dangerous uh, decision. Celebrated at the time, it turned out to be a calamity. Uh, the second time we went to, to Brussels, or the government I went to Brussels, and they came back with a situation that was twice three times, ten times worse than the original one that we rejected. So the government accepted a plan that was three times worse than the original plan? Yes, ev everybody knows that. Everybody knows that the one we accepted in Brussels uh, a couple of days ago is many, many times worse than the original one that they gave us and the House of Parliament rejected. But that would have hit small depositors? And yes, it would have hit sm uh, small depositors, but the, the amount they were, they were uh, uh, be forced to pay it was something like one and a half years um, uh, interest. There's no doubt that this country's banks depended just too much on Russian deposits, some of it rather colourful. But all roads seem to lead to Athens. And the people running the Eurozone who had to keep a lid on the crisis in Greece's banks. Essentially, Greece's bank defaults got exported to Cyprus. Mr Pavlou, the chairman of Lyki's audit committee, says he was shocked at what he found in the Greek subsidiary of his Cypriot bank. Billions were lost when the EU arranged a massive cut to Greek government debt, but there was many losses in opaque lending by the Greek unit. Would you say that that subsidiary was rotten? I, use, I wouldn't use the word rotten because there was a lot of people working there. There was some rotten lend There was a lot of rotten lending in that subsidiary. You know, in the UK we used to use the word dodgy. I think some of the lending there, some of the practices were very dodgy. Yet this is the part of the bank, which was, if you like, the cancer within the bank, that where have those losses ended up? Have they ended up in Greece? Ended up, uh, they ended up in, in the bank. 
and uh, I understand when the, uh, the, the Greek part of the Cypriot bonds was sold to the Greeks, all the expected losses were covered by the Cypriot um, uh, taxpayer. So tonight, draconian controls on the transfer of capital on the use of credit cards are imposed on this, a Western European country. In effect, Cyprus is leaving the euro for a holiday. Will it return? Can this really only last seven days? Some here think more fundamental solutions are required for this island's problems. As people continue to protest, helicopters buzzed around Nicosia for the first time. To police a riot? No. Amazingly, local media reported that the European Central Bank had delivered billions of euro banknotes for Cypriots to extract if they want to when banks reopen tomorrow. Will it calm the protests? Who knows? But it's incredible economic history in the making. Faisal Islam, Channel 4 News, Nicosia.